you've been whining and complaining a lot today. What's going mm. on? Um, I was just telling you two things. I feel like I'm just dull. I've got nothing interesting to say. I'm teaching a new course in September, and literally what I just said to you before we press record is, is I feel like it's a total piece of trash, and it's bugging me, and I need some inspiration. I need some, some confidence with it. I need some better ideas. I'm assuming it's going to come together, but as of right now, August 16th, 1.45 p.m. EST, I'm not feeling not feeling happy about it. So, right. Mike, help. <laughs> well, sometimes my past life history gets in the way of me wanting to help people or thinking I have anything to say or mm. to add to people's experience, although that's just one little shit-talking internal dialogue that I may have. And... Wait, what so your instinct is a date, like, okay, good luck, like, good luck with that, and you're like, I can't help you? Let That's it. one mm. potential reaction. Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned that to me earlier, that wasn't my reaction. Uh, okay. It was, well, how do I respond to that in the way that I think is most helpful? Something like that. Yeah, and so that's kind of what I thought of. Should we... What about you? Can I flip yeah. the question around? Yes. Before we get to our topic for today, what... Mm -hmm. What am I struggling with? Yeah. Yeah. Food and weight. Hey, okay. What food? Junk food. I eat too much junk food and... You're looking good. Yeah, but it's all here. Mm. So I'm, my legs are thin and strong. My arms are relatively thin and strong, but I'm getting old and fat in the belly. Mm. I just eat too much. What's that like one thing you just can't stop eating? Or what's the one thing you eat and you're like... like yeah, it's Damn more. It. Like, yeah, like candy and chips. And candy and chips and chips, chocolate. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, and just like like Doritos kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like good old Doritos, yeah, like, sour licorice, Mars bar. Oh, Mars bar, it's great. Yeah, but I maybe I don't exercise enough, and so I like. It brings yeah, you down. It does bring me down. Although, so uh, it's either I'm not good enough the way I am. So then my brain looks for a problem. Okay, what am I not good enough at? Oh, I'm a little bit overweight. And, my, and then so then it goes, okay, well, if you want to feel better about yourself, then you need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But do I really need to lose weight? I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I, I clearly could lose 10, 15 pounds for sure. I'm, right. I'm about 197 pounds. I'm five foot 10. Mm -hmm. I am like stocky or whatever, but it's still overweight. And so it nags me. And it's either, do I just let go and stop crying about this mm -hmm. and accept myself for who I am? Mm -hmm. Or do I go about taking actions differently to lose the weight? This is the Starts With Me channel. My name is Mike. Dave. And Dave. the channel, as you know, is about helping people increase their capacity for resilience and well-being. It's funny you, you frame it like that. Often I find it's for you and I to work through some of the things we're thinking about, whether it's like a culture war issue or... Yeah. And then if it happens to benefit the audience, then <laughs> that's like a very positive... But, but often, you know, unlike some other YouTube channels where maybe the presenters have the truth, they know everything. I think right, it's right, 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 one right. thing I love about these conversations is it's you and me trying to figure out what the truth is, where, what's, the, what's the right sort of moral response... We change our minds on certain things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's also that element of a lot of you and I exploring our own thoughts and where we stand and being mm -hmm. confused and getting frustrated, but then thinking like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be frustrated, like that kind of. Yeah. We're not just yeah. projecting yeah. your Here's you viewer, answer. this is what you right. should be doing. It's right. sort of just right. you watching maybe two people navigate complicated topics. Yeah, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that. And so before also you start reading, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. this is part of this quasi series uh, I've been doing on reading from Ryan Holiday's The Daily Stoic and trying to bring uh, insights out of that book. So we're on August 16th. Anything can be an advantage. Okay. Um, so this is Marcus Aurelius Meditations um, 8.3, so book 8, section 35. Um, he writes the following, or he wrote the following, just as the nature of rational things has given to each person their rational powers, so it also gives us this power. Just as nature turns to its own purpose, any obstacle or any opposition sets its place in the destined order and co-ops it so every rational person can convert any obstacle into the raw material for their own purpose. That 
Yeah, maybe we should just go on. Okay, so for those who maybe didn't, it's not obvious what he's referring to. Um, some of the, 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 the sentence structure is slightly different. So um, I think the last bit of that quote frame, uh, helps us to make sense of what Aurelius is talking about here. But here's sort of a modern day example. So I think this is Ryan Holiday's yeah, writing. Is that right? Correct, okay. Yeah. At five, uh, five feet, three inches tall, Muggsy Bogues was the, was the shortest player ever to play professional basketball. Throughout his career, he was snickered at, underestimated, and canted out. But Bose succeeded by turning his height into the very thing that made him nationally known. Some people looked at his size as a curse, but he saw it as a blessing. He found the advantages contained within it. In fact, on the court, small size has many advantages. Speed and quickness, the ability to steal the ball from unsuspecting and significantly taller players, to say nothing of the fact that players just plain underestimated him. Could this approach not be useful in your own life? What things do you think have been holding you back that, in fact, can be a hidden source of strength? All right. Good job. That was nice to listen to. <laughs> he, when, you know, we had the pleasure of Muggsy Bogues played on the Toronto Raptors yep. for a while, if you remember that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Five foot three. Tiny. That is sh- small. <laughs> for. It's crazy how yep. small that is. Like, it's actually crazy to think about that. And that's a testament to his insane freak freakish level of ability yeah yeah and athleticism and like, discipline and commitment and all the things and that just like break like courage yeah yes like some guys are six ten six Seven five three huge. yeah like yeah so credit to, to mugsy yeah well, i wonder what is it he, so he was on the hornets he went, went to the raptors yeah. what was his I original name do you know mugs no i don't know, I don't know. okay yeah, maybe it was mugsy okay yeah and yeah, to, great, to kind of great, really inspirational. What guy. we were chirping about before it wasn't isn't necessarily about uh, what what things do you think have been holding you back? Okay, no, that in fact can be a hidden source of strength. A lot. One of the things I've often talked about in these videos is how these principles apply to modern psychotherapy, and also how these things are not new ideas. Mm. Obviously, this is from Daily Stoic. So, in modern, in some modern psychotherapy, in specifically uh, team CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, this idea of the things that hold us back reflect what's good about us, mm. and but we get it twisted. So, for me, uh, what things? So, what do I think that's holding me back? from eating healthier and that insecurity, that anxiety, that whatever, that could be a hidden source of strength. Yeah. So the fact that I struggle to, to eat better and perhaps exercise more, although I'm decent with the exercise, what's going on there and how might that be a hidden source of strength? And on your side, maybe again, what is it that's bothering you or the fear you have about yeah. doing the course properly? What does that reflect or doing the... Yeah. The yeah. lesson planning. Yeah. What does that reflect about you that's positive and awesome? Yeah. So, so why don't you start maybe? Um can I give an answer to yours? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that allowed? <laughs> so okay, so you have a, a real struggle that a lot of other humans go through. Yeah. That can make you a, a sensitive like a more sense like how how does, how can you turn that into a superpower as a as a therapist? You know have some degree of understanding of what other people might go through sure you can also so one you understand struggles and how hard it is to fight the mind on certain issues you also have practical experience day to day going to war with some of your thoughts i just thought, so hold on, you I can need then, to interrupt. Yes, okay. this is yeah, for my own saying? my own no this is just pure selfishness i just had a thought run through my mind that maybe part of the reason i'm struggling with this so much is if i start eating health like just kind of cross a threshold stop eating as much junk food get more fit Mm -hmm. if that happens then that little nagging voice in my head doesn't have an excuse to criticize me or doesn't have an excuse for why i'm not more successful does that make sense say say it again so it's like i'm holding on to this maybe i'm i'm choosing not to get into super fit because you don't want to be successful yeah, because if I am There's and no I'm not left. exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. oh, Mike, you just realized you're actually just a dummy. Like you're not. That's yeah, you're yeah, not smart yeah, enough. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yes. oh, look, you've done everything 
you say you need to do to be super successful and you're still not successful. Right. Mm. So by holding on so to this. So keep eating junk food. So it's a bit of a buffer between. Yeah. yeah. And I can make an excuse for yes. why I'm not successful enough or something like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I had to interrupt you because that just popped into yeah. my head. I was like, ooh, that yeah. sounds right for me. Okay. So the, the question is, okay. So based on what Aurelius and Ryan Holiday are talking about here, yes. the passages mm -hmm. read, the question is, what is something in our, let's just say, let's keep it professional yes. or professional. What is something in our, something in our psyche, the way we think or a physical attribute that we think is a weakness, but that is actually an advantage in yes. our professional life. Yes. So Mike, your concern about weight discipline when it comes to eating i'm arguing it's actually an advantage professionally for you as a therapist because it makes you more sensitive to the struggles that your clients might be going through it gives you practical experience day to day uh that they can help you give good advice to those who are going through struggles whether it's on food whether it's on anything sure and just so, remember like we're not so much in the business of giving advice but what you mean is to be more helpful to be you, yeah, yeah you, yes. Yeah. You, so if you in your own personal, in your private practice, like yes, you're just yes, yes. like, like you, if you have everything figured out, it's very hard to be a therapist. I don't know about that. I think it's more because it, 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 there's many other things. Like I used to be a drug addict and I used to do all kinds of fucked up but shit. But th that's such, those are superpowers for you. Is like, well, they help in terms of empathy, compassion, and sort of authenticity so yes like yeah. i agree with you in a sense like it helps me identify with the person but mm. if all of a sudden tomorrow i lost 20 pounds and was a little bit more fit mm -hmm. i could still it, it doesn't mean i lose that do you know what i mean well maybe yeah you might yeah. because you might, might actually start to forget what it's like not to be disciplined it's possible because yes. that yes. the mind will will because the habits Habits are strong. Once yeah. you get rid of one and you impose a new one on your brain, your cognitive pathways or whatever pathways, then you, you might forget I the might. old mic. I might. I no, might. you haven't. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying keep eating yeah, 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 that's yeah. just so you can be a better therapist. I mean, it's a bit... But, but no, not, not necessarily. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, because you've, gotten, you've, you've addressed a lot of struggles in your life Correct. before and you're not doing those things anymore. Yeah, yeah, and you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're still thinking about them. They're still there. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe the food thing is just sort of a substitute for previous yes, substances I think so. I think or, or so. something yeah, going yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think that's how I would think about it. I mean, now, that's not an argument for keeping, holding on correct, to those. Correct, correct. And, and issues, I interrupted but, you so, when you yeah. said, how can we see our own perhaps minor struggles or struggles or whatever as a source of strength or whatever. Yeah. And then I kind of interrupted you with that whole thought process. So I don't know if you remember what you were going to say well, there. Well, just, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm making the argument that it, it's made you a more successful therapist because you're in the trenches with, you're there with, yeah, you're yeah, there with possibly. your, like, or at least when, when I, when I talk to you, like off camera, when I talk to you about stuff, I feel like, Oh, Mike's a good person to talk to about this because he's probably been through something similar before. Mm -hmm. He probably gets it. He's not going to judge me. He's just going to understand and probably say something smart about what, how I ought to think about it. Right. Like that's right. pretty yeah. cool because like, because you're in your mind, you're thinking about yes, what yes, it means yes. to live yeah. that kind yeah. of yeah. psychological life. So I think that's a superpower in some ways. Yeah. So maybe what things I just trying to think of like, What's the thing that's holding me back that can yeah. be a source of strength? Uh, I don't know. Um, well, so yeah. your your the thing that's holding you back is let's just say one thing. In, 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 this is you, not me, telling you. Yeah, this yeah. is you say your lack of discipline over food. Yes, is holding you back from just feeling better about yourself, Correct. feeling more powerful, Correct. stronger, Correct. healthier, all those things. Yes, that's probably all true, right? Yes. The flip is that it's actually a, a superpower making you a better therapist. Potentially. Potentially. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or just the lack of, you know, it bothers me a little bit, but I, my life is good. Like outside of the eating stuff, and maybe this yeah. goes back to, it's the one last thing I can hold on to that I can't make excuses about anymore or something like that. Okay. This, this is, it's not, the, your superpower actually isn't the quote unquote pathology. It's no. your ability to think about it and reflect on yes. it. That's what yes. makes, that's yes. the superpower. Yes. yes. So. Because then it makes you sensitive to the people you're talking to and better able to give good advice. Sure, something like that, yeah. Um, so the super, the, 
it might be understood as a weakness because like, oh, you're constantly reminding yourself of how shitty you are yeah. and how fat yeah. you are and <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah. But it's that ability, not rumination, but reflection that, that allows you to work in the field that you do. Correct. If you didn't have that, that makes your life harder. Yes. Because you think you're reminding yourself of how shitty you are and how fat you are. Yeah. If you didn't have that, you can't do, you can't be effective. Right. Yeah. I think. And, so that's, and, and maybe to, that's, on the bright side of things here, last year when I went away for two weeks, yeah. I came back at like 205 pounds. This year I came back still under 200. So that's Dude, progress. Congrats. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That it's is good. good. No, I agree. I agree. It's good. I have been more consistent in the gym over the past year. Yeah. I'm playing hockey more. Yeah. So I am inching my way in that direction, but I don't think I'm inching my way towards losing 20 pounds. I'm, inch I'm on my way to not gaining weight, but I'm not, uh, there's many more things I could be doing to right. get to where I think I should be. Okay, next, yes. next episode is yes. that. Is we're gonna, we're gonna, I want to talk, I want to I dive into what's getting your way, what are you doing, what are you not doing. Okay, I'd be is open that, to are you that. Okay, with okay that? but no. until then, you're going to tell us a little bit more about my, my super, my yeah. disadvantage, my your so yeah. Um, okay, so what what would the thing be that? Okay, so what's the dis, what's the thing I think is a disadvantage? Okay, so in my mind, the disadvantage I think I have yes. in the academic world is that I've never. I mean, a lot of a lot of people like me have this where I never feel like I'm that smart. I, I you know, I just don't. I don't have. I, I don't like complexity. Like I'm always an imposter. I'm always like mm, I don't really know a, a lot, um, and I don't. This isn't humble. Bro. I'm trying. I'm. I actually. Yes. Often feel like when I'm in a class, I'm like, I bet there's someone who knows more about this topic. They should be talking about this. I'm not the one to be and talking. Do you about mean this a stuff. student or just another colleague? And, uh, yeah, like someone 20 years older than yeah, me who okay. studied yeah, this yeah, topic yeah, yeah. for like you know 30 years, and they actually yeah. care about it. And um, I just want to also acknowledge it's not false humility; it's a genuine insecurity. It sounds yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. No, like it's yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's a, it's a. And so then, what's the, so why is it a, okay? So yeah, so what's an advantageous about that? Because it, it makes me it I I think it makes me sensitive to how I describe material to my students and how I put together a class. I don't assume that people in the audience are just going to put the connections together if I'm not doing it for them. Yeah. And I think for like 80% of students in a class, that is very effective. So there's going to be the really, really smart students that might not benefit from a teacher like me because this stuff is a bit more handholdy. Okay. But does that differ between your first year students and your master's students? No. I, I, so the master's students probably require a bit less of me. Like yeah, I probably yeah. need to dial it back. Okay. For yeah. my first year students, for the majority of them, they probably need a bit more of the, these, yeah. are, the, these are the things I'm trying to get you right. to learn. Right, right, right. right. Um, here are the five points you can remember about this war or, or this, you know, this. Ins my genuine insecurity about what I know and my ability to be like an academic, which has never been strong, like I've always sort of struggled with it, has actually allowed me to be a better teacher because I'm more sensitive to students being confused. I don't want students to be confused. I often think it's like my, not my fault, but my responsibility to yeah, clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing that really bugs me and makes me worried and keeps me up at night about teaching and designing a course, actually, in, I think when the time comes, I'm better off because I've thought a lot about, wait, how can I make this really clear to the people I'm trying to teach? So mm. I feel like I'm small out there, but that smallness makes me, you know, work a bit harder. Yeah. To to clarify what I'm trying to do is that yeah that sounds not great. always successful but I think it's it's definitely made me a bit more I think I think it's made me better I think if I had a stronger sense of oh look how great I am I had this PhD I'm you know if I that I don't think I would be as as effective is there one thing you think yeah. what would it take for you to I guess trust or honor your skill set and intelligence and put it out there more or something like that or is it more is there anything holding you back from putting your ideas into the academic world more or not so so that so on the research side i i i, I don't have the intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. but um, you do publish articles every now and again yeah but i don't i don't i mean i yeah like but i don't 
papers or like not papers like newspapers right or yeah like, no or I've, I've written a few yeah, yeah no i have and i i just find it i'd rather not be doing it okay <laughs> not out of like insecurity more just like out of lack of interest um to yes not as interested and not always convinced that i have something important to say right okay because that's the interesting part clearly the, clearly you must think you have something to say and i do too obviously because that's why, why here. yeah 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 I think I think the thing that I where my value comes on this planet is clarifying other people's ideas yeah. for other people. Yeah, 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 sure. Like and that's my yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, really doing yeah, as a like yeah, as a teacher yeah. I'm not like hey, here's my original research. Yes, it's yes, more yes. like here's this poorly written article or that's really complicated and there's this, how do we put them into conversation? How do we make sense of it? How do we Think about it clearly and critically. That's where I think I'm better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think my insecurity about my knowledge plays out well in doing those kinds right, of things. Because right, it's like, right, I'm, right, right, like right. the students, I'm reading something saying, I don't actually understand what this person is talking about. Mm, nice. So I'm going to try to figure it out. Yep. And then I can help the students figure it out because I've been there. It's like when you're, if you're helping someone with an addiction. Yes been there like yeah. i know yeah, what it's like yeah. to be confused i know what it's like to read something <laughs> right thinking like wait is it only me who doesn't understand <laughs> yeah. um so that's yeah I like that it's stressful like right now i was telling you before we turn, like yeah. i'm stressed about the upcoming semester like the, the feeling of teaching a new course always i just don't know how it plays out i know i'm going to screw up in ways i'm only going to realize <laughs> after the fact so that's a bit of a that's always a scary thought but um but i think some of these things do help Nice. Um, so the the stress that comes from the genuine insecurity that you yep. actually is a bit of an advantage when it comes to actually my in class teaching. I hope. Great. Okay. I think great. It is, yeah. Okay. So the one thing I've been, which David's not yeah. aware of, in these videos, mm -hmm. towards the end, at some point, I sort of go, "Okay, well, what does this mean in your own life?" So I always say something like, "Draw a line down the middle of the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. On one side, write what are the things." you that are you think are holding you back so similar to what he says at the end here right okay so for me it's you know i'm eating too much sugar junk food i'm not exercising enough or something like that uh, and then on the other side it's how might this how could this behavior be a hidden source of strength so maybe for me it's uh, I don't take life too seriously. I like to relax. Mm -hmm. I like to feel good. I like to whatever. I don't know. So for you at home, right? What are some things you think might be holding you back? And how might those be leveraged as a source of strength in you or in your life or whatever it is? Does that make sense? It makes total sense. To that or? Yeah, my only, the thing that's interesting about, this can this can have a, a, a per, um unintended negative consequences sure sure right we're like <laughs> oh my i should hold on to my genuine insecurity or hold on to your right supposed lack of discipline when it comes to food because actually it's an advantage and right. it's okay if i right um keep behaving keep like shit keep feel not great about my uh, and my intelligence and insult myself like yeah. that's a good thing right, or right. eat shitty food right and, right 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 so that's not the that's not probably what Stoicism would suggest. Like no. Marcus Aurelius would not no. say hold on to that disadvantage. Correct, correct, correct. But but in in the case, just to circle back to Muggsy Bogues, like he Bogues, he couldn't do anything about his height. Yes. So things that are you can't change, you got to figure out how to turn that into an advantage. Things you can change. No, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, well, separate the things you cannot change from yeah. the things you can, which is a huge Stoic. Not only Stoic principle, yes. but yes. generally, yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, I like that. I'm glad you brought that up. So for me, it's something like, actually, a good example. So yesterday at work, there, I go to Freshy to get these like healthy bowls. And mm -hmm. beside the Freshy, there's a dollar store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's right. where I get candy. <laughs> so in the, I, I brought the food back to my car and I said, I should drive away and eat this somewhere else just so I'm not tempted to walk into the dollar store. And buy candy. In my head, I was like, I should really drive away and eat this somewhere else. But I did not. And then I went into the dollar store and I bought the candy. 
What's that like when you want when you go into yeah. the store and you're 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 pulling it off the shelf and you're pulling out your wallet? What's that like? Yeah, it's just like a blend of I know this is not something I should but be do, doing. But you're but you're in you're yeah, you're, and it's like oh, I just rationalize it this that and makes that. me a better therapist. No, no I don't <laughs> go there. I just say oh, it's not a big deal. Whatever, right. I'll eat less candy next time or whatever. <laughs> right later. This time I did put half the candy in the garbage before I ate it. So that was good. I was like, right. I'm just gonna eat half the amount that Take I normally. Best. So there you go. That's one thing I did. Anyway, we should probably stop talking because we're running out of time. But um, no, but that—that's yeah. the last thought. But that's yeah. the worry with this thing is like, oh, my e- my eating ice cream late at night is actually a superpower. Yeah, Dave yeah, no, told me, not, so I'm just going to yeah, keep doing yeah. it because it makes <laughs> yeah. me more effective. Yeah, it's not my clients. Yeah, yeah, and that's where this disadvantage correct. superpower thing can be correct. detrimental. Correct. Yes. Another video we'll, we'll do one time is this delusion of the ADHD superpower. I think I even have a video labeled that because I interviewed uh, my boss, uh, ADHD specialist, on right. that. Anyway, we should probably stop talking. Can we uh, do? Um, yeah. you and I go to the dollar store. We just don't buy anything. Sure. Like we do, like the yeah, and we stand in the candy aisle and just we just look at it. Yeah, <laughs> look at it, Mike. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do that sometimes in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Time, okay, well, thank you. This was, I thought this was very interesting. Yeah, thank me too. You. It was good. Take it easy. Take it easy. Bye. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.